Good afternoon everybody. My name is Jody. My husband David John and I have a small farm in the Panhandle of North Idaho. These are stories and adventures, so welcome to Moose Flats Farm. And today canning season is just starting to rev up for a bunch of people. Strawberries are ready to be made into preserves. Your raspberries are ready or raspberries are really starting to get ready. So I thought today we could go through uh, we're not going to be canning anything today, but we're going to go through some of the different stuff that you need, the basics that you need to have to get started canning, and some of the other stuff you can get that just makes the whole canning process a little more easy. So we're going to start with, with your books. <clears throat> These are the different canning books I have. I have Putting Food by, and this is by Janet Green, Ruth Hartzenberg, and Beatrice Van Gaughan. Sorry if I butchered your name. I have gotten some information out of this one. Another one I have is the Complete Guide to Home Canning and Preserving that's put out by the USDA. And this one's really good because it gives a little more insight into the reason uh, how to prevent food poisoning when you are canning. I have the all new Ball Book of Canning. And the next two books are are the exact same book just one is hardbound and this is the ball complete guide to home preservation this is an older version of that other book I just showed you so I have and as you can see post-it notes marking the recipes I use all the time so I like I said I have this in the two different varieties I like this one and you can get this off of Amazon or any bookstore because it's got the spine or the spiral like a notebook. It will lay flat on the counter and it just makes it easier to not lose your place in your when you're doing your canning. Okay, I'm going to get these books put away and then we'll be back for what you need to really can. So for water bath canning and that's where you're doing your like your jellies and relishes and pickles and everything you need to get a water bath canner which it is a specific pot which inside comes with this rack that is specifically designed to be able to go down into the pot it's got these ridges here that you place your jars in to A, keep them separated because when the water's boiling they can kind of bounce around and break and we definitely do not want that. So you're going to have these and the reason this canner is a specific one is because these fit down in it. because it's like my big aluminum stock pot it doesn't fit down in so you do have to have a specific pot to do this water bath canning in and the next thing you have to have is uh, your glass jars which are jars that are specifically made for uh, canning they can handle the temperature and the kind of the jostling around. You don't want to reuse one that you've got from the grocery store just because they're not designed to be reused. And these guys are, let me open these up and I'll show you the other, in the three parts of this jar. So the three parts of your jar, especially when you get brand new ones, is you'll have your ring which is reusable so don't throw it away when you go and open up your jar of goodies then you have your lid that has as you can see that red area right there that is a wax ring 
that when you go to can, you'll put it in not boiling but hot, hot water to soften the wax. So after you've filled your jar, depending on where you need headspace, and I'll go into more detail on this when we are putting our goods in to be canned, and you'll soften the wax. It will go on the jar like that. Your band will go back on and you go snug and then finger tight. So those are really important items to have. If you are having to, like you're using your jars from last year, you're going to need to buy more of the the lids with the, the wax on them because these are these are the one-time use part of this so they get thrown away when you're done and you need a new one every time so when it comes to the point of you've got your jars filled with the your preserves or whatever it is you're canning they've got this really cool little tool it's got a magnet on the end so when your jars say say this is full of hot water you don't want to stick your fingers in there to retrieve it and you don't want to touch the wax part because you can introduce bacteria that way into your preserves so where, that's where this comes in handy because of the magnet it holds the lid and you do want to check your jars when you go through and sanitize these because you do want to sanitize them right before you use them. One of the reasons for that is to make sure that it is clean and two, uh, a hot jar is less likely to crack in the canner. But when you're going through, you're going to want to make go along the edge and make sure there is no crack or imperfection that would cause bacteria to be able to get in and not get a good seal. So you would just take your handy tool, goes on just like that, and you put your band on. Another couple good tools, and I've got a couple different ones, are funnels. Why do I keep closing this jar? So when you go to fill your jars, you can put your funnel on and it helps keep the outside of the, the jar clean itself. And you can fill to adjust head space and then you would go through with a diluted vinegar water and wipe the rim just to make sure it's good and clean. Put your lid on. And then when your jars have processed in your canner, you've pulled them up and it's ready to take them out. I've got two different jar removal tools. This one is one that goes like that. You have to physically do it to grab your jar. This one is spring-loaded, so it stays open and all you have to do is you go down and grab your jar and you can pull it up. And I really like the spring-loaded one. It costs a little bit more, but if you're going to be doing any amount of canning, this makes it really quick and convenient because then you're not having to hold it open, get it down around the jar, and pull it out and you are able to, when, when you pull your jars out of the water bath canner, you need to place them on a, a towel and then drape a towel over the top. Uh, you can use just a regular, I have in the past just a regular bath towel, just something big to put over them, but I picked up these uh, cotton flower tow towels so I'm going to be using these this year, just they were inexpensive so got those. And the next thing, so we've got basic canning part done, let's talk about 
the different pots for cooking your product in because some of this stuff like when you're doing pickles you'll you'll make the brine you'll stuff the pickles into the jar and then you'll pour the brine over the top of them but other stuff like your jams and jellies or like if you're doing relishes those you cook first and then they go into the jar so let me show you a couple different style of pots that you can get okay right here I have two different pots this one I really like this is my go-to one because it's got a nice heavy-duty base to it so you can cook stuff a little more efficiently without scorching at a little higher temp this aluminum stock pot it's got a really thin base on it so if you do go to the stock pot to do your product in you will have to reduce the heat and cook it longer stir more often because once you got a scorch in there it will ruin the whole thing because I've accidentally scorched a thing of applesauce and wound up having to throw the whole thing out to the birds and as you see we are on my glass top cooktop the element on the right side is or has been specifically designed so you can can on it the manufacturer does recommend that you use some form of glass cooktop cleaner before you go through and do any heavy duty cleaning on it just to protect the glass and another gadget for lack of a better term is I have this jelly strainer set so this is where you would when you cook like your strawberries or your raspberries and you want them seedless you would take your berry compote dump it into here and it just by the weight of it drains into, into the bowl so you have your essentially your uh, berry fruit and you do not want to smash or then you wind up with cloudy jelly another strainer tool and this one will be more for when we're doing the tomatoes so it's got this sieve little pedestal that you can put on a bowl or a pot and you can pour your tomatoes in there and then we've got this what is it pestle for going down and just smashing the, the stuff down to get all the juice and everything out. Another handy tool is called a Foley food mill and this comes with three different dies. I have one of them in the mill right now. So you have a really big one, a medium sized one, and then a really fine one that's on on this and it's got three legs that can come out you can place it over a bowl or a pot put your product in after it's been cooked and just spin this around and it goes through and like on applesauce you can get a smooth applesauce this way uh, it pulls out seeds so the other day I took some tomatoes out of the freezer and made some tomato paste with them and used this to, because I didn't have my new funnel, used this to grind the tomatoes down to get the seeds and all the skins out. And then there are some products that are very uh, fruit specific. This little guy he is actually a cherry pitter, so you'd put your cherry in there and the plunger just goes down and it pops the cherry out. A little time consuming because it does one at a time, but since I don't have that many cherries, it should work just fine. And then 
forgot to get my apple peeler down, so I'll be right back. And another product that you can get is this is a Johnny Appleseed. What? Yeah, Johnny Appleseed apple peeler, and it's really cool because it makes quick work of peeling and slicing of your apples. So you would put your apple on right there, and then you just wind this. And as it goes, working on the apple, this part right here has got a cutter on it. And I have that, I have that piece on backwards. So it will take the core out. And then this guy right here, that is the peeler. So it peels it. Let's put this on right, so. And you'll see this really in use when I, this fall when it's apple season. So as you can see, there's a blade right there where my fingernail is. And this whole round part is a blade also. So yeah, it just goes through, takes the core out and peels it and slice it into basically curly Q. So you can either just slice them in half and just have like chunky applesauce when you cook it or it makes it quicker going through the food mill. And there is another form of canning and that is called pressure canning. And that is basically like it sounds. It is food that is cooked under pressure. And that's going to be typically when we're doing the green beans, uh, tomato products, or meat. And I have, over the last couple of years, wound up with two pressure canners just because you have to bring the pressure up, let it sit for a certain amount of time, and then turn the element off and let it naturally come down to temperature. So with having two pressure canners, because it can take, say it has to pressure can for an hour, and then it takes about an hour for it to come down off pressure. If I have two cans, then that way I've always am able to get through whatever I'm pressure canning a little faster. But I, I have the book that originally comes with it, and the model of pressure canner, and I'll show you in a sec, it is one that is designed for a glass stovetop. So if you have a glass stovetop, make sure you get the one that is rated for a glass stovetop. And then the book I use is from Diane Devereaux, and it's the complete guide to pressure canning. As you can see, favorite recipes marked. And I have gone through in the owner's manual uh, added notes just so that way think little tips and tricks that I've learned while using it that way it's easier for me to remember but this is a pressure canner it's just a big heavy-duty pot it does have the lid does lock on it does have a rubber gasket on it this is your weight. This is your vent. There's your gauge for how much the pressure. And then this is the, this little button right here. When you come up to pressure, that will pop up. And you're good to put your weight on and build up the pressure to where you need. Takes a little adjusting on the stove itself. But it's kind of fun. But definitely we'll be showing you how to use the pressure canner a little more detail once the green beans start coming in or tomatoes, whichever is first. So now that, say, we are had our product ready to be canned itself, I don't typically do the water bath part of the canning during the summer down here at the house just because it does increase the temperature in the house and the humidity. I go up to the seed shed and do that part. 
So let me collect the stuff that typically, typically would be up in the seed shed and kind of show you how I have that set up up there for doing the canning part of it. So up here in the seed shed, as you can see, I've kind of rearranged it from when it was a seed shed. Now it's a canning shed. I have brought all my jars up here. One, just so I could physically see how much I had, what I need, what I need to get restocked on, like my quart jars. I'm pretty low on them, but don't have any big plans on a bunch of stuff going into quarts until this fall. But definitely need to be getting them now while they're in stock in the stores. But I have gone through on the hard surfaces that I'm going to be using. I have thoroughly scrubbed them down with bleach. So let's kind of, I'm going to grab the camera and kind of show you what the setup in here is like. And then I'll take you outside and show you where the water bath canner is and how that is set up until David John gets home and goes, I don't like that. And he'll fix me something better. So let's see what we got going. So over here on my work table, I just have my tote with my supplies for filling the jars. And I have picked up a couple really cool spoons. These are specifically made for canning because they're narrow enough to go into the jars. I've got slotted one and a solid one my dish towels, uh, water for when I get a little pot for the lids. I've got your mechanical timer because I never have my cell phone on me when it's my day off. Extra lids in case I need them in both the large mouth and small mouth and a bunch of extra bands. But this is the table that we're going to be doing most of the processing on. It has been thoroughly bleached, like I said. I have this convection hot plate. And the main reason for that is one, for heating the water for the lids, and two, for keeping whatever product hot while the first or second batch is being processed. But I'm just utilizing the shelves right now to hold my canning jars. So I've got the little bit of quart jars that I have right here. Over here, I've got my pint jars. And then over here is going to be the half pints. And I've got a couple of the quarter pints. The main reason for the half pints is for doing the, the jams and jellies it's just so that way it's not a massive amount. And I was hoping, because I prefer the large, large mouth to the small mouth, because it's like that jar is a small mouth. And then this jelly jar is the same size, but it's a large mouth. Have them here on the table. And you can see the comparisons. So this being a large mouth, it is a little squattier. And this being the small mouth, it's a little taller. I was hoping to get more of these just so then I don't have to have a mix of rings and lids but unfortunately where I got my jars yesterday they didn't have any so I just went with the small mouth for the jellies for this year and I have covered that window it's not so much for doing the canning up here it's more for when the potatoes are ready to come out because they can't be in direct sunlight and I want to use the shelves and everything to help them cure. So let's go out on the deck and I'll show you where the water bath canner is. I got the 
handy dandy magnetic screen on the door. So here's my water bath canner and it is on a propane turkey fryer and I have modified it and I do not recommend this but my canning pot is too big for this so I do have a couple magnets there just to keep the flame engaged and it gets connected to that propane tank. So hopefully that helps some people figuring out what they need to get for starting to delve into canning. Um, I find it a lot of fun. It's a good way to kill a really hot afternoon when the garden's really not needing anything but some weeding, which is better to do when it's not in the direct sunlight. So this is where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you have a good day and a good week. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And I appreciate all of you that do hit the like and subscribe button. I even appreciate the ones that just watch my videos for the fun of it. So we'll be back here very shortly starting to can. Bye for now.